Five years ago this week, Kern County was hit with two massive earthquakes. On the 4th of July, a 6.4 magnitude tumbler rocked Kern County. Yeah. Little did we know that was a foreshock to what was coming the next day. Yeah, on the evening of July 5th, we were hit with a bigger earthquake, a 7.1 magnitude tumbler. And joining us this morning to talk more about the anniversary and what has changed since those earthquakes, local geologist Emily Fisher talks some more about uh, what we saw. Emily, thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here. You were just here a couple days ago right. talking about an earthquake that we felt here uh, just south of Bakersfield. Of course, that was uh, a magnitude 4.1. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fairly small compared to what we saw five years ago this week. I want to first just talk a little bit about what was so significant about those two earthquakes because you have the 6.4 and that alone is a massive quake. Little did we know that, you know, a little more than 24 hours later, we were hit with a 7.1. With geologists and seismologists, when they look at these earthquakes five years later, what are they still talking about with those earthquakes? Oh, um, this was a, a really interesting case because as soon as we get a, a large earthquake that goes off, the United States Geological Survey like swarms in, plants a whole bunch of seismometers to get the usually smaller aftershakes um, to collect data. This time they caught a huge amount of data on that 7.1. Mm. Um, so there's a really cool nerdy thing that they learned that the same earthquake actually ruptured across multiple faults. And we had never seen that before. What does that mean? Um, it changes, okay, it's not a whole lot for like a practical right. like standpoint, um, but seismology is kind of new and it changes the way that we think about earthquakes right. and a little bit of the way that we say, how big can they be? Because we expected them to be on one fault plate. Okay, and these were these were very big earthquakes. I yes. think what is just still so remarkable is looking at, um, you know, just the fact that we did not have a large death toll from something like a 7.1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it really seems miraculous, and, and that just attests to the infrastructure, uh, the area that it hit, that sort of thing as well. But what does it tell us going forward um, about preparing for these kind of earthquakes? Well, uh, one of the the reasons why we fared so well, I mean, it was terrifying for everyone that is there, but the population density um, is a little bit lower compared to right. um, the uh, Santa Polita like earthquake that mm -hmm. was absolutely devastating because it was right underneath the, the city. So there's, it's not just the intensity, there's several other things that cause earthquakes to be more damaging and uh, end up hurting more people. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, there are things that we can do to prepare in those instances. So let's talk about how we can prepare. And one of the things that has been really talked about over the last couple of years, there's new technology out that yes. talks about um, how it could give, you know, we, we can have an alert sent to our phone seconds before we feel the shaking. I have experienced this a couple of times since downloading the, the new Shake app. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it does give you a few seconds to just prepare. Now, it's not necessarily talking about the magnitude that you're going to feel, but it does give you a heads up hey, shaking is on the way. Talk a little bit about how that new technology even works. I mean, because it's almost, it's not predicting an earthquake, right? But right. it's giving a lot of people just a few seconds heads up that you could in fact experience some violent shaking. Yeah, so the earthquake has already happened. It's on its way to you. So today I brought a slinky to be able to, to demonstrate <laughs> this principle. So Maddie, could you grab okay, one side of the go. slinky? So when the earthquake happens, it's already happened, there's two main kinds of waves. The P wave, which is the primary wave that comes first, is a compressional wave. So it kind of looks like this and it travels really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so the system uses that P wave to tell you an earthquake is on its way and that's where you get that alert that says drop, cover, hold. And then on its way are the much slower shear waves, secondary waves, and they're like that. Do you feel that one a little bit more? Right. Yeah, those are the damaging waves. And okay. the gap in between is where that early warning system gives you a few seconds to prepare. Okay, so it recognizes that P wave. That, yeah. And, and where this is happening, they're going to get, the closer you are basically to the epicenter, the shorter of a warning time you're going to get. Is that right? Right. If you're right on top of it, there's no way to warn you because it's right. happening right there. Whereas uh, the Ridgecrest earthquakes were 100 miles away. From us here in Bakersfield. Yes. Um, so we had a, a few seconds and we would have gotten that alert that says drop, cover, and hold. Okay. Um, that gives you a chance to get underneath a desk like this. Does the difference, I mean the, the time gap between the P wave, the first one, and the next one, does that give the folks at the epicenter a, a little bit of warning to get 
It's not really. It's going to be like, at the epicenter. It's nothing, and maybe really? a few feet away. It's less than a second. Wow! But a second can make a difference. So if you see a drop, cover, and hold on your phone. It's not a lot of time. Just move it's right not away. Not a lot of time. So yeah. you got to act fast. Yes. Okay. I know that a lot of people uh, bring this up every time we see earthquake. Oh, it's earthquake weather, or this is earthquake <laughs> month, right? Because we, of course, have the uh, these big earthquakes in July. And then later this month, uh, we're talking about 72 years since the earthquakes in Bakersfield in 1952. Again, happening in July and in August. Uh, those were on the White Wolf Fault. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about those earthquakes. First of all, is earthquake season a thing? Is earthquake <laughs> weather a thing? And is there any way to, to look at these earthquakes that have happened in, in Kern County, the one in Ridgecrest five years ago, the ones in Bakersfield and Tehachapi 72 years ago, any correlation there? Uh, no, there's not a thing uh, like earthquake weather. The, the magnitude and the scales that cause these earthquakes are, they're, you know, they're building up for hundreds, thousands of years. So there's no scientific evidence that supports hot weather correlating to that. I'd, I'd be really surprised if there was anything about what's going on at the surface because these pressures are deep within the earth. Um, but it... The, the hot weather is on our mind and it does seem to happen, <laughs> but sometimes correlation does not mean causation. Right. There you go. Yeah. And, and you know, when you talk about predicting earthquakes and looking at, well, one hasn't happened on this fault for this yeah. many years. When we talk about what that means, it's really in the hundreds to thousands of years range, right? So it, you can't really pinpoint something even to as short of a time as a decade. Uh, absolutely. So like, we're probably gonna, we are gonna have another large earthquake, but whether it's tomorrow or 10 years from now or 100 years from now, we can't predict on that kind of useful scale right. of like knowing it's next week. All right, we're short on time, but I gotta ask yeah. you really quick, uh, what should people do right now to prepare for, I mean, we've been saying this for decades now, the yes. big one. And I think a lot of us kind of, okay, we've been talking about this forever, it's white noise now, right? But what should we do to prepare for the big one? So one thing is like, think about what you would need in your house if you are without power uh, and water for two or three days um, and prepare a little kit for the needs of your home. And then also a good uh, first aid kit because the um, first responders are, would be answering uh, to, to huge issues, bearing people out of rubble. If you can fix cuts, scrapes, that sort of thing on your own, you're better off to be able to take care of yourself as much as possible. When you think about like the medication that you need maybe on a yes, daily basis, good having point. some extra of that on hand because your pharmacy, you know, if you're about to run out, you could be in trouble. Uh, if you can't get to the pharmacy uh, for a week or more. That's a great point. So the Mike Shake app will mm -hmm. give you that warning once anything's above 5.0, and it has a nice guide to step you through making your earthquake. Oh, good, oh fantastic. Good. So mm -hmm. download that app. Yeah. Emily, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure.